it's an opera, all right. Just no soap opera. As the punchline for the new show, Winnie the Opera goes, love her or hate her, but come and hear her. That's exactly what we did on opening night at the State Theatre. Beginning life as a short film, this production became a semi-staged digital opera, and ultimately the real thing. Composer Bongani Ungodana Breen put the intrigue into perspective. 20 years ago, um, we were in a very dark place as a country. And this country was falling apart the scenes, we were in a low grade civil war. And now we can stand here in the State Theatre and look back at these events and we can celebrate the history of the struggle for all our liberation as South Africans. Winnie is an extraordinary woman and to see her in an opera as if Vita Pesetin had said, oh my chitz, I didn't know she sang. <laughs> I'm very excited, I'm very excited. There's a wonderful tension here that we've lost in theatre. You know, it's got a political scent to it. The opera focuses on Winnie as she's subpoenaed to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. With producer Mfundi Wunkler keen that it be seen as a two-sided portrait. This is going to be very, very controversial in the sense that this is not a whitewash. You know, we, we deal with Winnie in all her complexity. You know, there are certain scenes which are like the stompy, the stompy scenes, you know, which are controversial. We do not fear to go down that route. We're going to get the sweet and the sour of the narrative. Moving between the 90s, 80s and right back to the 50s, the storyline, or libretto, was co-written by Mfundi Wunkler and South African filmmaker and producer Warren Wilensky. One of my favourite scenes is Winnie in Branford asking her, uh, Mrs. Mandela, will there ever be one man, one vote in your country? And she just says it with such certainty and conviction that she says, of course, there will be one man, one vote in this country, and Nelson Mandela will be the president of South Africa. And to me, when this comes across in, uh, in, in the opera, to me, it's one of the most defining moments, because that was the hope that so many millions of people needed. Classical soprano Zakani Mashwanganyi has performed on four continents for Madiba, the Queen, and the Champions League final. But this is new ground. I don't know what people's reaction might be, but hopefully, like me, they, they will learn a little bit more about this person. I mean, other than what they already know, because I discovered things that I obviously didn't know before. So I'm hoping that maybe the reaction might be a new discovery. Playing the arch and chair of the TRC is Linda Zita, whose time in the church choir led him to opera school and what could be his career-defining role. He knows her from quite a long time, as much as when he was uh, under house arrest in, in Brentford. He would go there to, to give a communion and you know, give a moral support. He's actually like a father figure to, to win here. This also helps as well, you know, getting into the character of uh, Desmond Tutu. Invited by Clint Eastwood to lend her voice to the soundtrack of the movie Invictus, Yolandi Nokia now takes the role of the young Zinzi Mandela. If it were not for Winnie Mandela, the name of Nelson Mandela would have been lost the time that he spent in jail. And on what I have read about her, she gave up so much to be faithful to him, to keep his name alive, to remain strong. Naturally, the production had added spark on opening night because both Winnie Madikizela Mandela and her daughter Zinzi were in the house watching this interpretation of their lives. I never expected it to affect me this deeply. Uh, I said next to my daughter, she was very moved, especially, you know, the scene where my mother's in prison and there's that whole subconscious conversation with my father and she broke down. I think it's the most spectacular celebration of my mother's life. Opera for me is a first experience and I found it uh, a very interesting and uh, I would encourage many other uh, young comrades to come and experience this and uh, I'm happy that uh, it's also meant for a different constituency. Now those who love opera will also have an opportunity to learn our history through uh, opera. It is a production that uh, you know needs to be enjoyed, not only by South Africans, but people the world over. There was only one audience member who knew how close to the truth the plot, its judgments and characters were. She was no impartial observer. It's not a journey we always want to revisit in our lives. But uh, 
it, it actually reminded one of those painful years, but it is a good thing. Uh, the emotional catharsis is always a very healing experience. I'm just so stunned that uh, something like this could be produced, uh, the interpretation of history through opera. It's the first experience of its kind, and I, I have learned such a lot, and my family, I think, is also just as shocked as I am that uh, instead of writing books and, and magazines and newspapers, you could actually interpret history this way. I think this is the greatest achievement uh, by the young people who did this. As a moving, living, emotive treatment of South Africa's past, Winnie the Opera asks pertinent and probing questions of the audience. And that's never a bad thing. Next up, 